So what I just took off the hay baler is what they call the gauge wheel. And this wheel rides on the side of the hay pickup and it follows the ground and it allows the hay pickup to go up and down with the ground so it can kind of pick up the hay nice and evenly. So um, ever since I've owned this hay baler, this has been bent. You can see that if it is, when it's straight up and down, that the gauge wheel ends up kind of kicking over here to the side. So it's been bent up since I've owned it. And all I had was a propane torch. I didn't have anything that was big enough to heat this up and bend it back. And you can see, this is like half inch thick steel and it's probably two inches wide. So it's a, it's a decent little chunk of metal. And uh, so I ended up finally, I bought an oxy acetylene torch. So I've never owned one before, but they definitely can come in handy when heating up metal. You can cut metal with it, you can weld metal with it. So hopefully we're gonna be able to get this heated up today and get it straightened back out and bolted back on the machine. Now, as I was taking it off the machine, I ended up breaking, I ended up breaking the bolt that attached it on there. It was seized up pretty good. So uh, I'm gonna have to end up drilling this out, probably have to re-tap it before I can mount it back on the machine. So just like any other job, it just turned into a bigger one. But let's head back to the, uh, the pole barn over there. I'll show you uh, the torch we just bought. So this is what I ended up buying. It is a Lincoln Electric Porta Torch. And I know you can, you can find these at Lowe's for about 310 bucks. So it comes with a torch set up with the hoses, the regulators, and it comes with an oxygen tank and an acetylene tank. Now the problem is, is they're really small tanks. They're not very big. It comes with a little carrying case, so it's uh, nice and handy and portable. You can carry it anywhere you need to get to a job, so that makes it just kind of real a handy little torch. The only problem with it is that it only probably, since it's not a very big tank, they don't last very long. So I hear you get about 30 minutes of cut time with a torch like this. Now I don't use a torch very often. I'll, I mean, typically just to heat something up to bend it back. And um, I've never had a cutting torch. So I think that'll be handy. So I think this little rig will be fine for me. I don't think I need the real big setup because I just won't use it that often. So the big problem buying these is you're, you're going to buy this whole setup and the tanks are going to come empty. And then you got to find a place that will either exchange your empty tanks and give you full tanks or that will uh, fill up the tanks that you have. So that's kind of the problem is just finding the right spot to get these uh, tanks filled. So that's what we're going to be doing today. I'm going to go run um, into town and I'm going to see if I can get these tanks uh, filled up. And then we'll put this all together and see if we can get this metal bent back into shape. So this is the, uh, the little setup. You can see it's got this little carrying case where you can carry it around. It's got a little pocket in the front where you can put the different tips and everything for your torches. And then the hose can wrap around the front. So the big complaints about this setup that I've watched on the internet and read about is one trying to get the tanks filled, uh, finding the right place to do that. And then the other one is the tanks are actually stamped differently. This one is stamped for Department of Transportation, it is approved. And this one is, the oxygen is actually stamped ISO number. But even though it's stamped ISO, it does have a sticker on here. And the sticker says that that ISO is approved by the Department of Transportation. So, even though it's approved by it, it's not stamped. And a lot of people had trouble getting these exchanged or filled because they didn't have the stamping on the bottle. Hopefully I don't run into that trouble. So I'm gonna go ahead and run to town and get these filled up. So I just got back from filling up the tanks and it was a little tricky, I will say. So I went to the first place and my new bottles did not have the stickers that are on here that say oxygen and acetylene and that place would not accept the bottles because they didn't have stickers to put on them. So they sent me on to the next place. So I went to the next place and they would exchange my bottles but they were out of oxygen. So I was going to have to come back on Tuesday. So they sent me to the next place and then finally the last place I went to um, I walked in and they uh, said it'd be no problem and they exchanged the bottles and uh, I had to go outside and they just told me to pick out the two best looking bottles or whatever bottles I want. 
So obviously these bottles have been used, you know, it's just an exchange program. But I do have oxygen and acetylene and I can get this torch going now. So I'm gonna go ahead and get out the regulators, get out the torch, get it all put together. And then we're gonna to try to bend back uh, this piece of metal and get it straightened. So the torch is marked with a, an O for oxygen and an F for fuel. So the acetylene goes in the fuel and it's a reverse thread so you got to thread it backwards to get it on and the oxygen is a regular thread so it turns to the right. So there's no way to really get them on backwards just because they thread opposite. So I've used an acetylene torch before but never really to cut anything just to heat stuff up. Now this did not come with what they call a heating tip or a rosebud. It just came with a cutting tip and a welding tip. So I'm just gonna try to use the cutting tip um, without hitting the trigger and just try to move it around and try to heat this up and glow it red. So I'm just gonna kinda go easy with it just to slowly heat it up. I truly need to find the right tip to put on here, um, a rosebud tip to be able to really wanna heat something up to bend it. But I'm going to try it with this cutting tip, but I'm not going to hit the trigger and put it into the, the cutting mode. So we'll see if we can heat it up this way. If I was to hit the trigger, it'd go into cutting mode. I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to try to heat it up this way. If this doesn't work, I may have to just go to the store and see if I can find the right tip. I actually bought a tip for a medium duty torch and it was incorrect. It was too small to fit on this torch. So I'm gonna have to take that tip back and get the correct one. So if I can't get this to heat up this way, I may just go ahead and leave again and uh, get the right tip. All right, does not look like that is gonna work. So one thing that didn't come in the, uh, in the torch kit was a, what they call a heating tip. And uh, it's commonly called a rosebud. And it has a bunch of little holes in the end. This tip right here looks like it has eight holes in the end. So there's eight little flames that come out of the end. And it's made to heat up a big area and, and just get something uh, hot so that you can bend it back into shape or to try to break something loose. So I had to go to the store and buy this, this heating tip. So now that we got that, we're gonna go ahead and light this up and see if we can get this metal glowing red so that we can bend it back into shape.
Well, not have much luck with this. This bolt's gonna come out now. That's a lot better than having to drill it. So I got the gauge wheel mounted back on the hay baler and the bracket, we were able to straighten it. It's nice and straight now, but the wheel is actually still a little bit kicked to the side. And that's because this bracket that it's mounted to is actually slightly twisted. But uh, really that's a huge improvement over it was before, so I think that's good. So that oxygen acetylene torch that I bought, um, I started off with the cutting tip on there and I got the pressures all set up and I tried to see if I could heat that up with the tip without pulling the trigger. And of course that wasn't going to work, right? But anyway, I, I got it to where it had a good flame. When you pulled the trigger on it, it had a nice cutting flame. It looked like it was going to work fine. I never did try to cut with it, but it looked like that the cutting tip was going to work. Um, so what I needed was a heating tip or a rosebud tip. I had bought one but it was for a different torch. It didn't match the torch I had. So I had to run to the store, re exchange that one, and get the correct one that fit the torch I have. So that rosebud tip, I struggled with it. I really had a hard time getting it to burn good and clean and, and uh, not pop. Because I thought I'd have everything set right, and as I would try to um, you know, start heating it up, it would want to start popping on me. And, um, man, I really struggled. I mean, I tried different settings on the regulators. I tried messing with the, with the flow knobs and everything on the actual torch. And I just could not get that thing to not want to pop. And finally, I had to let, I just, the torch feel, felt like it was getting warm. So I finally let it cool off. I took it apart, looked at the inside, made sure everything was clean on the inside. I readjusted the regulators again. And I finally, after messing with this thing for a while, I finally got it to where it burned right. And it seemed like it was burning good. I was able to get this piece of metal heated up where it glowed red, um, you know, through the metal. And I was able to get it bent back into a straight line. And I was so happy. <laughs> I was really happy when that finally, uh, when I was finally able to get that straightened out. So uh, I ended up using half of that acetylene bottle messing around with that torch today. Um, and that, that ended up costing me $65 to exchange those bottles. So it was somewhere probably close to $45, $50 to actually for the gas. But then they charge you for hazard fees and taxes and different things like that. So it ended up being $65 bucks by the time it was over with. And if I would have gone through that whole bottle today and not got this piece of metal straightened out, I would have been so frustrated. Um, I was already thinking in my mind, I'm going to go throw a bunch of firewood in the fire pit. I'm going to get some hot coals going and get the leaf blower and make like a little blast furnace and see if I could heat the metal up in the fire pit. Um, that way, go old smith blacksmithing almost. Um, I was already trying to figure out a way to get this straightened if I couldn't get that torch to work. Uh, 
but I am so happy that I finally got, got the bugs worked out of it. So 99% of the problem, of course, is me and trying to learn how to work that torch. Now, I will say that that, um, that tip that I had, being a number two, it's a small tip, and it only wanted to run, I was trying to run five PSI. And that oxygen gauge, um, the lowest mark on the oxygen gauge was 20. So I don't know where five pounds was on that gauge, and you don't know how accurate it is. So I, I will say on that torch, I think the regulators and the gauges are probably fairly cheap. I mean, you get what you pay for. So it was about a $350 torch. I think you can pick them up at Lowe's for about $310. Um, so you're not going to get the best regulators and gauges. So I think the big deal was just that pressure was so low, I was at the very bottom of the gauge. Um, when I was running the the cutting tip, my oxygen was up close to 60 pounds. So it's a totally different ball game. I was able to get it set and it worked fine. So anyway, yeah, I struggled today. Um, the torch, I think, will work fine once I learn how to use it. Probably could use new gauges, maybe a new regulator on the oxygen so you could read it a little bit better. But uh, for what I need it for, I think it'll work once, once I learn how to be consistent with it. So anyway... Um, the hay baler back here behind us, we have been, I'm slowly trying to fix the things that are wrong with this. So we got the, the gauge wheel fixed. I got several pickup teeth in here that I need to replace. Um, so I'll probably try to go through that soon. And then I, I was breaking shear bolts last time that I ran this, this baler. And I had a lot of people tell me that my windrows were too big and it was packing too much in there and breaking a shear bolt. Well, one time when I broke it, I was in a windrow. Um, the second time I broke it, I was actually ran out of the rim row and I was turning to go over to another one and it broke then. So I was not taking any hay uh, at all when that shear pin broke. So I don't know if, if that's the problem. I think what my problem is, I'm afraid that I've got some bearings in here that are wearing out in the plunger. And I think I'm going to have to end up pulling the plunger and going through it, probably getting the blades sharpened or replaced in there. So I've got quite a bit more work. Uh, on this baler, I think, to get it back into where it's a reliable, we'll say that, somewhat reliable machine. I mean, it's 60 years old, but I do want to do my best to, to try to get this thing in, in decent running shape so I don't have too many problems when I bale hay, which will be coming up. Uh, the alfalfa is already starting to bloom again, so here in another week or so, I'm going to be out in the hay field uh, cutting hay and baling it again. So. Anyway, I think that's it for today's video, guys. I just thought maybe I'd show you um, buying an oxygen acetylene rig and kind of the struggles of getting tanks and then trying to learn how to use it, of course, um, since I'm a newbie at it. Um, I'm definitely struggling on how to use it. But anyway, uh, it, I got done what I wanted to get done today. I got this straightened out. And, uh, yeah, being a half-inch thick piece of metal, there was no way I was probably going to be able to do that without a torch. So, anyway, I think that's it for today, guys. So, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.